Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy. Today's project is going to be a secret. No, I'm not going to tell you. Uh, I suppose I'm going to have to put something in the, in the description. I suppose I'm going to have to put something in the title. But if you don't read the title, how likely is that? Unlikely. You won't know what it is. It is a spindle turning project, and I'm going to start with a spindle roughing gouge. As we all know, I hate spindle turning. I just hate it. I'm just not comfortable with it. I don't have good tool control. I don't even have a good idea how I'm supposed to point this stuff. But I'll figure it out. This piece of wood is roughly two and a quarter by two and a quarter by seven inches long. It is a cutoff from what I call the cherry bird's eye or bird's eye cherry platter that I did a few videos back. I cut a circle out of the, the piece of wood that I had and this this is a portion of what was left. So I'm hoping it'll look nice. I see some burrow in there. Everyone corrected me. It's not, uh, it wasn't bird's eye cherry, it's burl cherry. And I appreciate those corrections because that didn't even occur to me. So in any event, here we go. Uh, I'm going to get my mask and face shield on. We're going to be turning at about 900 RPM. Well, I stopped the camera for a minute so I could put on my mask and face shield and neglected to restart the camera. Sorry about that. I'm just rounding it up and then I'm going to put a tenon on this end so that I can put it in my chuck. Okay, that's close enough. Maybe I'll go with the uh, spindle gouge. All right, let's see if that works. Maybe I will use uh, tailstock support for a minute. Okay, and I just want to round up this top a nice round over here. I'm just going to be real honest with you here. I know what it is I want to do. I don't know how to do it. So I'm going to be changing gouges, chisels from time to time, trying to figure out how to get to where I want to get to. I, uh, I think I'm going to do some rough shaping. This needs to be tapered way down at this end and then kind of bulbous at this end. So I'm going to use this uh, shallow roughing gouge to do some of that because I think it's kind of forgiving, I hope. I hope it's forgiving. I'm not going to worry about these natural defects that I, I said I wanted to keep because this wood has enough figure in it to be very interesting. That's quite beautiful, isn't it? So I may end up removing those in my rounding process, but there's plenty, there's plenty going on in here. And I don't have firm dimensions in mind either. I know generally, I think I need three inches below somewhere around this point, three inches below there. But again, I don't know exactly. So getting back to it, this gouge does work pretty well. I gotta get out some measuring tools here and think this a little bit. I think it's time to remove this little nub down here. So I'm just gonna use a parting tool. And I might be a little bit too domed here, I'm not sure. Let's see. OK, 
Okay, now I need to mark for a tenon an inch and three quarters. Now I need to take the parting tool and part down to that size. You know, I could actually, I could actually uh, use the tailstock, and I think I will. I need a, I need a center hole here anyway. That looks pretty good. Now I need to drill a hole in the end of this, 3 8 inch hole. So I'll get set up for that. I'm going to drill all the way through this thing, all the way through this. This is going to become the top, cut it off, and it'll be a separate piece. I'm going to go ahead and drill clear down into here. It doesn't really matter how far as long as I get through this. And again, this is a 3 8 inch hole. And now, while this is still mounted up, it's time to sand this edge. And I'll work up through uh, 400. So I'll be back when I get that done. I sanded up to uh, 600 just because I had some laying here. And now I'm going to use my thin parting tool to reduce the size of this tenon over here. This whole thing is actually a tenon. Let's see if I've got this straight in my head how to do this. Probably not. And that's so bright, I'm not sure you can even see it. Huh? And what do I want to reduce it to? Well, that's a good question. Well, the answer is I don't actually want to reduce it at all. I want this this whole side piece, we'll call it a tenon, to stay the same size, but I need to separate it from the body. So I'm going to, maybe I need to zoom you in a little bit. What's important here is to leave just a little bit of this tenon, just a very small portion on the body. So I'm going to make my first cut to leave that. So this is what we have. This will become the lid for this piece. And most importantly what we have is this little tiny remainder still attached to the body. So now we can uh, cut a, uh, a recess using this as the outline, which is exactly the same diameter as this. So that's next. Just gonna cut a recess. Yep. So now I'm going to bring up the tailstock and just apply a little pressure to hold that in place while I turn the body down to match the top. Oh, I did make a major mistake. I guess I better tell you about that. You know, that probably looks all right. I drilled a 5 8 inch hole. I don't know if I said I was drilling a 5 8 inch hole. I certainly meant to drill a 3 8 inch hole. But I drilled a 5 8 inch hole. So that alters my plan somewhat. It doesn't really change much, but it's going to require a little more work. But we'll get to that when we get to that. This is not the top that I imagined, but it's the top that I have. So we'll go with that. So back to the body. 
I need to determine a length here pretty soon. I can just, just see my opening right here. So let's see, what's going on with the body? Okay, I just need to bring the diameter down on the body a little bit. Okay, how long is it going to be? Well, this is kind of an arbitrary number. It has to be close, but not exact. I'm going to go with uh, three and a half inches from this point, this high point, to the interior bottom of the box. Three and a half to the interior bottom. And then I want about another quarter inch or so for the bottom. So this is my parting off point. Yeah, we can live with that. So I'm thinking I should sand this up. So that's what I will do. This is not the shape I imagined, but it's the shape I have. I'll do some sanding and I'll be back. Well, life has intervened here just a little bit and it's been a, uh, I missed a day on this and I'm fighting with what to do with my mistake. As I said, I meant to drill a 3 8 inch hole through here and I drilled a 5 8 inch hole. And that presents a problem. What I need on the inside of this is a piece of 3 8 inch material. Could just be a could just be a wooden dowel. Could be a turned wooden dowel, but that's not really necessary. It won't be seen much. What I was going to use is this piece of uh, plastic rod that I have. I have lots of these, and it happens to be 3 8 of an inch, and that's what I meant to drill my hole for. And I guess I just forgot and drilled 5 8 so how am I going to fix this? I, I could I could plug this hole with a 3 8 inch dowel. It would be a tighter fitting one than this. Glue it in there. Redrill 3 8 inch through hole through this. Or I could plug it only from the bottom halfway up like that. And this is going to have a little, not a finial exactly, more of a knob on top of it to, to grasp. And the bottom of that knob could be 3 8 or five eighths, five eighths of an inch to fit into this hole and then just go up from there into a little knob or like I say fill the whole thing and drill a, a new hole well the problem with that is this dowel that I might use to fill that hole is not a burl and from the inside you're gonna see the end grain of that dowel just a little bit so you'll see that much of it minus a three-eighths of an inch hole in the middle of it. But I don't really have much choice. So I guess that's what I'm going to do. I'll just have to live with it. I think I'm keeping this. I don't think anyone's getting it because I love this wood. So I'm going to take a different five-eighths inch dowel. This one I've sanded down slightly for a different purpose. And I'm going to have to sand down the other one because it's slightly over five-eighths as well. And uh, just plug half of this hole and leave the top half like that and just fit my knob into that hole. So that's what I'll be doing. I'll be gluing this and letting it set up for a bit and then I'll be back. Dang it. Wish I hadn't done that. Well I forgot there was one other option that I had available to me and that was uh, take a 5 8 inch dowel, leave that much of the end 5 8 of an inch to glue into here and then turn down the center of the dowel and even this end turn it down just just leave 5 8 of an inch here turn that down to 3 8 so I could do that so now remember if you plan on making one of these this is a step that you will not have to go through uh, just drill the correct size hole and it doesn't have to be 3 8 of an inch either that's just was the size of that plastic rod I was going to use and that's why I was going with 3 8 but then I mistakenly drilled 5 8 so you don't have to go through this step but I thought I'd let you see it anyway what I've done is uh, I've done some math and I've determined that I need three and five sixteenths of an inch. So I cut a four inch dowel and I'm just going to put it in this existing hole from drilling my five eighths of an inch hole through the lid into here a little bit. So I'm just going to use that to drive this. 
and I've put a hole in this this end, the center hole. So I'm just gonna put that there, bring up my tailstock, push this dowel into that hole for friction. It'll just be a friction fit. And that'll do the driving. I don't need much pressure. So hopefully that'll do the trick. And what I'm gonna do is leave uh, this, uh, uh, well, I better measure. I'm gonna measure out my three and five sixteenths, and this end of it is gonna stay three eighths or five eighths of an inch. This end will stay five eighths of an inch, four or five sixteenths of an inch in length. And then I'm gonna turn it down to something to what doesn't really matter too much at this point because this is what I'm gonna use for my centerpiece. Uh, could be quarter inch or whatever, it doesn't really matter. So I need to make a mark on here somewhere. So three, three and five sixteenths. So I'm gonna go three and a half. I need to waste a little bit of this because of the hole in the end of it. Well, that hole, I guess that hole won't actually matter. So I'm gonna make a mark at three and a half inches. And I said I need five sixteenths. So this will be left unturned, but it will be sanded because it won't quite fit in a five or a five eighths inch hole. From this mark, that can all be turned down up to here, and then this needs to be left alone, except sanded. So it'll fit in my hole, and I'll test fit the lid on there. What a pain. What a pain. One little mistake. A little bit of pressure. Then I need to determine a diameter. I'm just gonna turn it down to 5 16 of an inch. So I'm gonna take my 5 16 of an inch wrench and use that as a gauge. I don't wanna get quite there, because as you can tell, it's vibrating. The thinner it gets, the more it vibrates. So I'm pretty close. I'll do a little more turning on the body of it and then bring it down to final diameter when I'm nearly there. What I've done here, I'm not sure if it shows on camera, but I've, I've, it's sort of a, it's tapered on this end, tapered on that end, and slightly fatter in the middle. That way it'll look like it's on purpose, maybe? It's like a design element, sure. So, I guess that's ready for sanding. Again, don't be confused by all this, because you won't have to do this. You will do it right in the first place. So, let me get some sandpaper, and I'll be back. Well, I finished sanding my little spindle here. And I put a finish on of uh, Howard Feed and Wax. Covered up the areas that, gonna, that are going to have glue on them before I did that. So now it's a matter of uh, I have to drill a hole down the center of this piece. And I have to sand that piece. And I'm kind of looking forward to the sanding which isn't something anyone normally looks forward to. But because this grain is so cool, I just know it's gonna look great once I get it sanded. So I'll get that sanded up. Uh, no need to watch that probably. So I'm just separating this. So there's my piece to fix my mistake. I'll put this in place well, I sand, and then I'm going to have to take that out of there, and I'm going to have to sand the inside of that lip so that it isn't such a tight fit. Right now it's too tight. You wouldn't be able to lift it off of there, and that's no good. So I'll just sand all this and put a finish on there, and I'll be back. I sanded up through 3200 grit. I could have gone further, but that seems like overkill already. But this is just such pretty grain, and it was so easy to do that I went ahead and did that. And I have my finished centerpiece here. So 
So this will go in here. I already showed you that. That'll go in there. Now the next step is to drill a hole in here, one and three eighths of an inch. So that's next. Well, I've repaired my mistake. I glued the uh, center shaft into the hole that I drilled. Meant to drill a 3 8 inch hole, drilled a 5 8 inch hole. So now I have space here for the little knob that I'm going to turn and fit in there. It's bigger than it needs to be, but it'll be okay. So that's all glued up. And now I'm going to drill a 1 and 3 8 inch hole. And yes, I've checked it about 19 times. And I'm going to drill it about 3 and a quarter inches deep. That's three and a quarter from the little lip right here. Three and a quarter from the lip. Let me check my shaft size. That's three and a quarter. But there's going to be something on the bottom of this. But then again, this is going to go through that something on the bottom. Now let me do a little more math. I'll be back. Okay, I settled on a depth of three and seven sixteenths. Almost three and a half inches. Now, in order to get my lid to not be a press fit, which I do not want, I need to take off just a tiny bit right here. And I was going to sand it, but it's just too small to sand. I think I'd end up just rounding it over, and I don't want that either. So, let's see if we can take off less than half the width of this blade. perfect just just barely any wiggle there so I'm happy with that now I am gonna sand the inside here a little bit and sand this uh, little ledge that I've got for the lid to sit on so I'll do that off camera and I'll be back Okay, I'll let that dry a bit and buff it up. We're getting there. The sanding's done, the finishing is done on the body here, so I'm ready to separate it. Now I wanna go straight in and create a little uh, base for this to sit on. And I've done that. So now I want to go, I want to slightly uh, undercut this so it'll sit flat. So I'm coming in at a bit of an angle. So I've got a little nub I need to get off of there. I'll probably use a chisel and then sand it up and get a finish on it and I'll be back. Now I need to turn a piece that goes inside the opening of the body. It just so happens that uh, what was left from my parting off the body is exactly the right diameter. So I'm just going to part this down to that or cut this down to that. And the height of this, the thickness, the height this way from here to here is not critical. So I'll just guess what I need. That's just about right. By the time I sand it, it'll be good. So let's see. And now I need to hollow that out, so let me reposition the camera.
I'm going to use my parting tool to go in and set the wall thickness. Which also isn't critical. Maybe I'll just use this to hollow it out, huh? Oh, I can go deeper if I want to. I don't have to. That's probably deep enough. Let's see how deep I am here. quarter inch and this is deeper than that and that's a good thing this is about uh, three-eighths of an inch so that'll leave me an eighth of an inch bottom and that's just about right so let me get this sanded up oh well I still have to drill a hole in it So now I will get this little guy sanded up and part him off. I just want to get a little finish on here. I don't want to get it in that hole where I'm going to be gluing. Okay, so I'll let that dry and then buff it up. And part it off. Come on, baby. A little sanding and that's good to go. So we're getting there. This is uh, the interior of the main body. And so this is going to go in here like this. And now the last piece I need to cut is a, a little knob for the top of it. And so I've mounted up a piece of uh, walnut that I found. I don't have much walnut at all. So this is actually a cut off from the end of a, a board. The grain goes this way, so I've got end grain here, and end grain here, side grain everywhere else. But that's just the way it is. It's all I could find. So I'm just gonna make a little knob to go on here. It needs to have a 5 8 inch tenon to fit in my misdrilled hole. That should have been 3 8 of an inch, but that's okay. It'll still work. So that's next. So I've just got this mounted up in the chuck jaws and I'll be turning at about 1300 RPM. There was some checking in that end grain and I was hoping it wouldn't go in very far, but I still see it. I guess we'll start with uh, turning the tenon down. Okay, I've got a caliper sitting here that I've set to 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, I'm just going to use these to get me close and then I'll use my other one to get it exact. Okay, so that gives me some idea what I need to do with the knob, which is I have no clue. I guess I just want to make a little round knob. I don't know what else to make. I still have these checks in here and that really bothers me. I might have to find some other piece of wood to do this with. I did turn this shoulder down so I can get a little closer here. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little CA on that checking. See if I can keep it in one piece.
I'll let that set up a bit. Okay, I need to bring <clears throat> I need to bring this tenon down just a little tiny bit more. Okay, that should be good. Well, I think that's what I'm stuck with. I know, it doesn't look like anything, sorry. Okay, I'll get that sanded up and get some finish on it and I'll be right back. Okay, be that as it may, there it is. So nothing left to do but part it off. So there you go. The next time you see it, it'll be in action in our, our secret turning. Before I show this to you in action, I wanted to be sure and cover the uh, dimensions. So let's see. We have one, two, three, four, five parts. The body on mine, and this doesn't have to be for yours, is four inches tall. Bottom to this upper lip right here is four inches tall. The diameter of the bottom one and nine sixteenths on the top this is just my design yours may vary of course is two and a quarter inches here to here this is a one eighth inch gap for the lid to fit into one eighth inch below the very top here interior depth is three and a half inches the hole drilled for the interior one and three eighths now that this is together i believe that hole could be about uh, a half inch less we'll get to that in a second half inch less depth the lid is one and three quarters of an inch from here to this side one and three quarters of an inch how high you make it is up to you just depends on your design this little gizmo the basket is one and Three eighths, one and three eighths inch. Well, slightly under because that's a one and three eighths inch hole. This is ever so slightly under, about uh, about thirty seconds of an inch less than one and three eighths. The height of that little basket is three eighths of an inch. Depth of the basket on the inside is five sixteenths of an inch. That's inside here, from the top lip to the bottom. This was going to be three-eighths of an inch, if you remember, and then I went and drilled my hole to five-eighths of an inch through the lid. That was a mistake. This was going to be three-eighths of an inch, and that is the diameter of the center of this. Now, I tapered this upward and downward just for appearance sake, not for any particular reason. And the little knob that I made three-quarters of an inch at the widest point three-eighths of an inch in height I would make a better knob if I had this to do again but it works works fine so I think that covers all the dimensions oh let's see from the bottom of the basket bottom of the basket to the underside of the lid is two and seven-eighths and that's kind of critical uh, it could be as little as, let's say, two and five eighths. Now you want to see it in action, don't you? So are you ready? Who's figured it out? I've never seen one of these before. Well, until, and I'll show you, I'll show you the until. Come on, last chance. What's your guess? I suppose I'm the only one that's never seen one before. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Toothpick dispenser. Well, I think it's cool. Don't you think it's cool? Come on. You got one? Make one. Now you got all the dimensions. Great gift idea. 
So like I said, I'd never seen one before until a co-worker came to work one day and he held it like this and he said, you want to buy this? And I said, well, what is it? And he went like this and I said, yeah, I want to buy it. Never seen one before. I thought it was way cool. And I've always wanted to make one out of wood. And I bought this from him probably 25 years ago. So I guess I, <laughs> I must have forgotten. But I saw it the other day and thought, yeah, it's time. Time to make one. So I made my own. And I'm glad I did. Well, I hope you guessed right. If you like this video, thumbs up please, I'd appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, I very much appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.